What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for this week's episode of Dragon Ball Super. And <laughs> this episode, what did I just watch? <laughs> like, oh my god, guys, this episode was fucking hilarious. I was dying consistently. I could imagine that Sean Schimmel and Chris Sabbath and the rest of the DBS cast or Dubcast or Funimation were probably having the time of their life throughout this episode. I wouldn't be surprised that they're half day that there's probably like over like they probably do like hundreds of takes for some of these scenes because just because like. <laughs> This shit's so fucking hilarious, and the, and the, and the Dragon Ball has become it's, it's like like fourth wall breaking, and it's just uh, <laughs> it's hilarious. I, I love it. I love it. Like this is actually the first time we ever seen something like this where we had like a crossover between two series. Because like in case you went between like you know we had two um, series done by Kira Toriyama. I forget like Penguin Crashers was that one series called. So that was an early '80s gag manga, and then we got Dragon Ball, and we got mixed them together, <laughs> like. It makes as well much sense as Kingdom Hearts, but God damn it, is it fucking hilarious? Now, guys, I've never seen any of Akira Toriyama's other works besides Dragon Ball. Um, so, yeah, I was like, I can imagine the Japanese. Like, when this episode was airing in Japan, the Japanese audience would probably have the time of their life because they know about this series. That they were probably laughing their ass a lot harder than us then. Because, like, you know, they know about the series and all that shit, so they get, like, has a better connection with them. I give it to a lot of Westerns watching this, and we're probably confused as hell. <laughs> Especially me, I was like, what? Huh? What? I mean, I know Akira Toriyama did other work besides Dragon Ball. I know that was his big thing, but he did do other stuff beforehand. But, you know, like, I never read them or watched any of their anime adaptations. They did have any. <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, enough jibba jabba. Let us begin. But before I be actually do begin... Uh, one thing I do want to talk about, um, if you guys are wondering if I'm going to start reviewing uh, Dragon Ball Heroes, I will when the fan subs drop, just so that, because I, because like, as you guys know, I can't read a lick of Japan, I, I can't understand, a lick, I can't speak a lick of Japanese, so I'm going to wait till the fan subs drop, and whenever I get a chance to, I'll then watch the episode and then review for you guys, because I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Super Saiyan Blue Goku versus uh, Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Also, I'll be definitely reviewing Super, um, Heroes when that airs, and also, guys, you guys also know that Toonami, uh, actually aired the first episode of Pop Team Epic today, or last night, I should say, and what the fuck did I just watch? I mean, <laughs> like, I felt like I was slowly going insane watching that episode, and they rear and they watch, and they added the same episode, the first episode, twice, because the episode 12 episodes are 12 minutes long. I don't know why they didn't just air the second episode, but whatever. Like, I was just so confused. I'm like, what am I watching? Like, they're referencing Berserk, My Neighbor Totoro, I think Guardians of the Galaxy. And I'm just like, I'm like, I was like, slow, I'm watching, like, what am I watching? And I'm like, and like, there's your, there's a Your Name reference in there. And then there's a Thunder thing. <laughs> that show is so confusing, but I love it. Anyway. So enough of that, let us talk about Dragon Ball Super. And also, we start this episode off with a very 80s ass anime OP, I guess. I haven't watched any, I don't think I've watched the anime from the 80s, but it definitely gives me that old, like, you know, that old timey feel with the saw. I mean, the art animation's modern, obviously, but the saw and just how it was all, like, you know, how it, like, how it all went down. It, it definitely had that old time feel. It, actually, it also reminded me more of, like, a Super Sentai OP, you know, uh, Power Rangers, but, uh, you know, Japanese Power Rangers, or, well, Power Rangers, but, you know, the original version of Power Rangers is Super Sentai. But, like, because, like, when I was watching, because, like, I found, like, a video that was, like, had, like, a bunch of the Super Sentai OPs in them. I watched one of them that had, like, the series I grew up with, and man, was I just laughing my ass off constantly, because, like, Jesus Christ, Japan does not take that show seriously at all. <laughs> I'm weird here in the state taking a little seriously, but not too seriously, because, like, you watch the American intro, they're badass and epic, then you watch the Japanese, and then they're freaking, and it's a freak, and I feel like I'm watching a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> They're just so stupid. <laughs> like, oh my god, I'm just like, oh my god, Japan, I love y'all, but man, do y'all make Power Rangers look so uncool. <laughs> anyway, so, you know, we had, and like, we actually started this with the pig state, like, yes, this episode of Dragon Ball Super is a, is a crossover. Thank you. <laughs> and so after the OP happens, we see um, this doctor. I forget his name. Like, I, I've never, like I said, I've never heard of this series. I mean, I know of it, but I just, I don't know, like, any of the characters by name or anything. So we have the doctor, he, like, he's, like, going to, like, a, well, the Central City, I think he said, um, or West City, uh, to, like, you know, uh, to debut his, like, new invention he has for this, uh, fair, or this, like, you know, this little, like, science experiment convention thing. 
And of course, then we get to the city where we actually see our we actually see Goku. Um, we got this reporter. He she's like you know just like you hey Mr. Satan's here. We got this thing about different scientists with their inventions. Yay! And so we then see Goku. He's working security detail because Mr. Satan had a job. And of course, we get this flashback of Chi Chi being a massive fucking bitch. She's like, Goku, you were going to give it to her, gave you this job, and you're going to go there, and you're going to get it, and you're going to do it, and you, and you know, fix your hair, and I'm like, you know, Chi Chi being the massive fucking bitch she is, like, you know, actually, I just want to tell you guys something, on my Twitter, uh, which I'll have the link to that in the description box, you know, follow me if you want to, um, this dude quoted an old tweet of mine, uh, from a tweet I made a while back on Namco Bandai's Twitter, uh, they were talking about, like, you know, hey, remember this epic wedding, uh, this, like, legend, royal wedding, it was, uh, the wedding between Naruto Hinata from Naruto Shippuden, and then someone reported, like, you know, oh, don't forget this one, and it was when Goku and Chi-Chi got married, and I, and I, and I replied saying, fuck Chi-Chi, she's a massive bitch, and <laughs> this dude quoted pretty much saying that, you know, you know, that, um, that pretty much, dude, he pretty much told me, like, he pretty much just said, you know, fuck you, uh, blocked. Like, you know, you're banned from life, you're banned from life, A equals block. And then I checked, the man legit blocked me <laughs> just because I just spoke the truth. And someone hit me up in my DMs saying, they said, like, you know, uh, dude, uh, you, she, is she stubborn? Yes. But a jerk? No. I think you got your facts wrong. I'm like, dude, do you not know the definition of a bitch? Like, hey, uh, uh, Urban Dictionary, there are many definitions for the word bitch. And you'll see my definition in there somewhere of how a lot of us use the term bitch. Because we all know Chi Chi is a massive fucking bitch. Like, <laughs> I swear I fucking hate you. And so, we got Coke, we got like some hair gel in his hair. Like, he was almost recognized, unrecognizable for a minute. And then he's like, you know, stretching. He's like, man, this job is boring. He stretches his arm out, and his, and his suit actually tears. The arms of his suit tear, so just rips him off. And his hair actually um, goes back to his normal state, which actually kind of reminded me of that one scene from Dragon Ball Evolution. Yes, I know that movie is shit, but, you know, like, everybody, like, you know, remember when, um, when Goku was going to that party? Um, you know, he put some hair gel in his hair to make to not have that, like, mohawk thing or whatever stick out, but then it just immediately went back and the hair just flung on the mirror. It reminded me of that scene. I don't know if Toei was personally referencing Dragon Ball Evolution, or I just noticed that because I've seen both of these. But whatever the case may be, let's continue. So, they announced the winner, which ends up being the scientist from the, um, of the other drag, from the other, uh, series, instead of Bulma, and she actually, a reporter actually asked Vegeta, like, you know, a question, he's just like, hmm, like, he's like, he's just like, you know, Vegeta being Vegeta, and then, so after that, we then see the villain of, of that, um, of, like, Penguin Crashers, what's it called? Um, he shows up, you know, along with, like, you know, the, the robot girl that I'm guessing was the main character in that series. Um, she shows up and, you know, she said, like, you know, oh, I gave her this stuff that makes her want her compulsion to play ten times full. And so Vegeta ends up fighting her, and then... <laughs> I love how self-aware Dragon Ball, okay, this, well, this isn't really self-aware Dragon Ball, but it's more like them just breaking the fourth wall, where while Vegeta's having their fight and she ends up kicking Vegeta out of the building, there's a huge um, hole in the wall, he says, she must be from an early 80s gag manga, <laughs> and I started to, I was just laughing my ass off, because I was like, Dad, that's really specific, <laughs> like, this episode was hilarious, guys, but I gotta say, the art and animation, though, whew, it was bad in this episode, whew, ooh, man, whew, come on, Toei, come on, I know y'all, whew, 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 man, that art and animation, though, whoo, whoa, whoo, ooh, 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 so, and then, you know, Vegeta fights her, but then the Vegeta just whooping Vegeta's ass, and they keep saying, like, you know, yeah, she's definitely a gag manga character, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and Goku's just sitting there, he was napping early, and he's just wondering, like, what the fuck is going on? And so, you know, he ends up, so after she gets rid of Vegeta by, like, very much, like, you know, kicking him into space, but he ends up being on top of, like, this cliff, on, like, this branch, he's like, there's no way I'll ever find another Gakmonga character again. <laughs> Oh my God, I love this! Like I said, I feel I feel like Sean Schimmel and Chris Sabbath had like a ball, like you know had like a ball, like you know recording this episode. Because man, I'm sure they all two were like dying laughing from the lines, and because this episode was fucking hilarious. This is all, like in terms of just comedy, in terms of like just the com more comedic episodes of Super, this is probably one of my personal favorites, just because of how like you know breaks the fourth wall and everything. Anyway. So, you know, then Goku takes a shot, and he has to go to Super Saiyan Blue, and, you know, while they're, I don't, there's another part 
where she like, does like this little gag because we found that she is a robot. Uh, she ends up like you know breaking the earth into half while Vegeta is lecturing her about the laws of physics and nature. Now you can just bend them to your whim. He's like, and she isn't listening. He's like, listen to me while I lecture you. <laughs> oh, like I said, guys, this episode was hilarious. And so we got Goku and the girl, they're fighting out, he's in Super Saiyan Blue. Uh, we got Bulma using that machine, which we know this machine um, uses through the power of imagination. Um, can conjure up pretty much anything. So, like, you know, when he demonstrated to Mr. Satan, he, he like, pretty much gave him, like, a, a, like, he pretty much had, like, a porno mag that Mr. Satan was really like, oh, yes, this is very impressive. <laughs> and so now he ends up, and then he asked the machine to create literal shit. Like, literal, actual, you know, feces. Literal shit. So, you know, and then, which actually, in case you guys, which, by the way, remind me of that, like, blue thing from Dragon Quest, because it looks like it, which, by the way, if any of y'all are wondering why Dragon Quest characters look like Dragon Ball characters, that's because Akira Toriyama is the character designer for Dragon Quest. A little fun fact for you guys. Anyway. So, you know, we had, so then Kid Trunks uses, like, the stick to, like, bring it to the, bring the shit to her, and she ends up, like, you know, playing with it for a few minutes, she ends up getting bored of it, and then, uh, she, and, and we, uh, Bulma ends up calling a Beerus to, um, get the rest, to get the, uh, to get him down here to take care of this little girl, because we know he's a massive destroyer. He's napping right now, and we ain't gonna wake him up. So, she ends up using the machine that has everybody, you know, watching this, um, this, this science fair or whatever, to, like, think of the most delicious food they've ever had, and, con and like, you know, point it towards their TV, which ends up being this, like, this little pellet thing, um, that's probably, like, the most delicious thing on Earth. It ends up waking up Whis from the smell. He ends up destroying like the the, the uh, doc, which I like how they actually brought about the doctor, like or the uh, the villain of this episode, or I guess the main villain of that series, uh, where he, like you know the dude really like, le legit pulls up a manga on the series and like starts flipping through, like see you die here, how are you still alive? He's like I'm a ghost fool. <laughs> so Beer Whis gets and a Beerus gets rid of him. He was about to destroy the little girl, but he ends up getting like, but he ends up having a bad case of the runs. Like, he's like, he starts grabbing his stomach, he's like, mm, like, Whis, get me home! He's like, no, Whis! <laughs> and they end up flying away, then, you know, they take their leave, and that's where the episode ends with Vegeta, on top of that cliff, he's like, I will never fight another cat manga character again! Like, <laughs> so, I probably, you probably, I was probably speaking to, oh, yeah, this episode was kind of, like, all over the place, but man, was it hilarious! Like, it was, I, this episode was just insane, I'm like, this morning, like, like, what, huh, what? Like, I was dying throughout the constant episode, like, it sounds like this reminds me of why I love Dragon Ball so much. But, yeah, overall, I guess I'm sorry, 9.5, and though really my only real problem I had with this episode was the art animation, because goddamn was it bad! Like, Toei, come on, y'all! I know y'all can do better! I know, and which kind of makes me worry what they're going to do with those remasters, the movies that are coming out here in the States in uh, September and November, which in case you guys are wondering if I'm going to watch them, I, I'll try. If I can manage to get my driver's license in time, uh, if I can manage to get my driver's license in time, I'll, and, I, and college isn't a problem, I'm definitely going to be copping tickets, because like, I'm going to see all three movies. I'm more tired for the Bardock movie, because I'm definitely curious on how Bardock is. I've, I've seen little bits and pieces of the movie, but I haven't watched you know the full... Um, full Bardock movie, which I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, Seiko. I wish the history of Trunks was in there, too, but hey, we got Brawly, and we got the movie fe fe uh, featuring, uh, Gogeta. So that's gonna be interesting, and of course, I think they mentioned the Dragon Ball Super movie that's coming out this, this, it's also coming out in the, in the summertime as well, I think. Uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, uh by the way, I can't say I saved my final verb for this week's episode is a 9.5 out of 10. So, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like, you did subscribe if you're new. Follow me, subscribe, and turn on the notifications below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time.